This video describes methods for determining an adequate sample size when performing a process capability analysis. Given a set of specification limits and a random sample selected from a process, process capability analysis estimates the percent of items that do not conform to the specifications. Items may consist of manufactured units, contacts with a customer, or anything about the process that may be classified as either conforming or non-conforming. The output from a process capability analysis is typically one or more capability indices. One popular index is called CP. CP is a two-sided capability index that compares the distance between the upper specification limit and the lower specification limit to six times the standard deviation of the process. A second popular index is called CPK. CPK is the smaller of two one-sided indices. It's the smaller of the mean minus the lower specification limit divided by three sigma and the upper specification limit minus the mean divided by three sigma. It may also be used if you have only a single specification limit. A third popular index is called CPM. CPM is a modified version of CP that measures variation around a target value rather than around the estimated process mean. It's CP divided by the square root of 1 plus the difference between the mean and the target value squared divided by sigma squared. CPM is always less than or equal to CP. It can be much smaller if the mean of the process is much different than the target value. Of course, whenever we try to estimate a process capability index without examining every item that's being produced, there'll be some error associated with that estimate. For example, if I want to estimate CPK using data that are randomly sampled from a normal distribution, an approximate confidence interval for CPK is given by the expression you see here. This expression involves the sample size n and the number of degrees of freedom nu used to estimate the process standard deviation. What we're going to do here is determine how large n needs to be to get an acceptably precise estimate of CPK. Stack Graphics 18 provides two methods for determining adequate sample sizes. The first method is specifying the precision of your estimator. It works as follows. The first thing you do is you select a value of CPK. For example, a lot of companies would like their CPKs to be in the neighborhood of 1.5. You then specify the width of the desired confidence interval for CPK. For example, you might want enough samples so you could estimate the true CPK to within plus and minus 10%. To show you how this works, I've loaded Stack Graphics 18. I'm now going to go to the top menu and select Statlets, Sampling, Sample Size Determination. This will open up a Statlet window, which I can use to determine sample sizes for a number of different parameters. I can use it to determine sample sizes for estimating means, standard deviations, differences between means, correlation coefficients, and also CP, CPK, and CPM. 
I'll select the capability index CPK. Where it says base sample size on, I'll select relative error. And at the far right, I'll put in 10, indicating that it should estimate CPK to within plus and minus 10%. I also need to specify a null hypothesis, which is the value at which I want to control that error margin. In this case, I'll tell it that I want a 10% error when CPK is actually 1.5. I control the confidence level of the interval I want to construct by specifying alpha. If alpha is set to 5%, then I'll be estimating a 95% confidence interval. Where it says type, I can specify either a two-sided confidence interval, a lower confidence bound, or an upper confidence bound. In this case, I'll select two-sided. The last thing I'll do is press my right mouse button and go to pane options. And for the moment, uncheck the button that says show alternative hypothesis, which is not relevant for the method that I'm using. I'm now ready to look at the result. At the top of the screen, you can see that it tells me that I will need 212 items randomly sampled from my process in order to estimate CPK to within plus and minus 10% when it's somewhere around 1.5. At the bottom of the graph, it draws the confidence interval I would get if my estimate came in at exactly 1.5. In that case, the confidence interval would range from 1.35 to 1.65. A second method for determining sample size is to set up a competing set of hypotheses. For example, I might specify a null hypothesis that CPK is 1.5. Also, I'd specify perhaps an alternative hypothesis that CPK were 1.3. I could then ask the program to figure out how large a sample I needed to distinguish between those two hypotheses. Now that's typically done by specifying the alpha risk and the power of the test. Alpha would be the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it was true. Power would be the probability of rejecting H0 when the alternative was true. I'd specify a small value for alpha, a large value for the power, and let the program figure out what the sample size needs to be. Let's return to Stack Graphics 18 and this time let's apply the power approach. I'll select Statlets, Sampling, Sample Size Determination. The parameter to be estimated is CPK. I'm going to ask it to base the sample size on the power. This time I'll need to specify both a null hypothesis of 1.5 and also an alternative hypothesis of 1.3. I'll ask it for a 5% alpha risk and a power of let's say 95%. So I'll need to up this from 90% to 95%. Once I've done that, I'll then press my right mouse button and go to pane options. This time I'll turn off the confidence limits but leave the alternative hypothesis on. As you can see from the title, the sample size required is 297. Incidentally, the graph shows me the power of the test. It's called the power curve. It shows me the probability 
of rejecting the null hypothesis as a function of the true value of CPK. In this case, there's only a 5% chance of rejecting the null if CPK is actually 1.5. If it shrinks to 1.3, there's a slightly better than 95% chance of rejecting the null. If you'd like to learn more about determining sample sizes for estimating process capability, take a look at Chapter 8 of my book, Process Capability Analysis Estimating Quality from CRC Press.